Hey guys, welcome back to the Money Game with AC. So, quick update on the market and what Jerome Powell said today that I believe is going to be or is actually a very game changer in the way we expect the market to react based on what caused the market to be on the downtrend so far, putting more pushing. Um, um, everything into bear market territory right now. So what exactly happened? Futures were down big time before the market opens today. At some point, it was down 400 points on the Dow Jones just before market opened. And suddenly, gradually, as Paul was speaking, you know, we ended up being even up almost 180 points at some point with the Dow Jones before settling almost flat. Now, what did he say? He said a lot of things. He said a lot of things. But something I want to, I mean, two things I wanted to kind of um, focus on. Because this, when you look closer and you dig deeper, I mean, it speaks volume. The first thing he said is, the U.S. economy can handle the additional rate hikes that are coming. That's the first thing he said. Well, this was kind of something we already heard from him and from other feds. Some of the other feds that are thinking that we can still achieve what we call a soft landing, meaning they can still, still try to avoid inflation from increasing actually pushing it down to 2%. This is their main goal right now, and they're committed to it as they were testifying in front of Congress today. But also, you know, in the meantime, not crushing entirely the economy. Why? Because by increasing interest rates, the goal ultimately is to do what? To have credit go up, be more expensive. And because we are a consumption, uh, 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 we are a consuming economy, if People that are mostly spending in this economy are spending through credit. If credit is going a little bit higher or getting more expensive, well, it will force them into stop buying stuff, hence pushing price down, prices down. Another thing he said, which is actually the game changer I want us to focus on, is the following. Increasing interest rates will not slow down inflation. And this is definitely true. Why? Because what caused the market to start being panicked about inflation or what caused inflation to starting to be really, really high, it's mainly around the war and supply chain issues. But ultimately, even before these two things started, you know, really, really being uh, weighing down on the economy, what caused inflation was not people buying stuff to begin with. The main the main cause of inflation in the U.S. was the money supply. The government ended out a lot of money. Do you imagine 40, I mean 30 to 40 percent of the U.S. dollar in circulation right now have been issued, have been put out in 2020 and 2021? It speaks volume. So you still have this massive amount of money flowing into the system and when you have such actions, there is no way you don't have consequences such as high inflation because money is cheap. Money is available out there. People will actually start getting a lot more in order to do a lot more with money because money is cheap. Now, supply chain issues came here. The war came here, all got expensive, and everything else will be expensive whenever all is expensive. And then you have labor costs because people have money. They, don't, they are not as eager to go back to have one, two, three, four jobs in order to get by monthly. Why? Because they have cash. And when people have cash and they're not willing to go back to work and you have supply chain issues, well, things get messy. But the bottom line here is what caused inflation was not a natural, logical thing that will ultimately cause inflation to run hot. It was majorly because of this huge money supply coming from the Federal Reserve and the government willing to help people that were being crushed with the pandemic. Was it a bad thing to do? That's not my place to say. That's not the purpose of this video. I'm just going to lay down stuff for you so that you have all the information, all the knowledge, which will help us make the right decisions right now in order to benefit and profit from what is going to happen. Because ultimately, what this means, what this means is the Federal Reserve may not be using the right tools to bring back inflation. In other way, the market may see this 
as a way of, well, maybe the next interest, interest rate increase are not going to be as aggressive. Because if the Federal Reserve doesn't think increasing interest rates will bring inflation down, which is ultimately true, it's just a consequence, then it means what's the point of being aggressive, right? What's the point of being hawkish, as they say on mainstream media? Now, this actually creates a huge opportunity. It creates a huge opportunity, especially if you missed 2020. In 2020, the market went down 40%, but in a matter of three years, I mean, in a matter of three months, the market already recovered the entire loss caused by the pandemic. And since then, boom, the market was on a bull run. So right now we are in what we call whether a bear market or a correction, but we are in a downtrend. But what is causing this downtrend, which is inflationary recession, everybody is starting to cause fear out there. There is so much fear out there. It is ridiculous, but it's good, right? right? It's good, right? Because you want to be positioning yourself right now because lots of people are not seeing exactly what I'm going to share with you right now. First thing is Credit Suisse, which is a, you know, investment bank started to, I mean, issued an article today and they were talking about solid corporate earnings estimate and attractively value stocks have created a buying opportunity for investors as the U.S. economy is likely to sidestep a recession until next year or 2024. Why? Because right now everything is on sale. I don't care if it's energy. We used to be the leading sector so far in terms of performance for the entire market. Energy has been beaten down, especially in the last eight days. Don't even talk about um, the tech sector, all the airline sector, all the industrial. Everything is just on sale. But what people are missing is the fact that corporate earnings are still very, very, very in a good shape. Like balance sheets of companies, companies are, some companies are buying back, increasing the dividends. But ultimately, what we're having here is that the ability for companies to make money, the ability for companies to still be profitable even in the midst of this has not changed a lot, even with high inflation and everybody thinking about recession. But stocks of those companies have been beaten down because the market is trying to discount. People are so ridiculously fearful that it creates this, you know, a, 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 a third out there, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. But that is good because when you look at the reality of things, looking at the data, the earnings, the profitability of companies, which ultimately is the leading indicator into why you need to hold stocks, they haven't changed that much because companies are still in a good shape compared to 2008, compared to 1999, compared to 1970, even with high inflation and chances of a recession, which by this article, we will not see before 2023 or 2024. So that's number one. Number two is when you look at the historical data, when you take the data, you analyze exactly what has been going on in the past you cannot help but see exactly what these guys are seeing. History says that the next bull market is just months away and it could carry the S&P 500 to the 6,000 level, mm -hmm. according to Bank of America. So going back to this Credit Suisse article, you know, it means ultimately that investors have no choice but to buy stocks such as a steep sell-off because corporate earnings are holding up and investors are almost obligated because let's be realistic if you're saving money right now it is it's not doing you any good at all because even the interest rates are increasing really fast the savings rates are not increasing as fast as the fed reserve interest rates so if you have a hundred thousand right now in the bank you will barely get a thousand dollars on it that will be what one percent you will barely get one thousand dollars so one percent at the end of the year but if you want to double, triple, or even quadruple that money in the course of the next maybe 12 months or 24 months, you have no choice but to buy stocks. And that is why I'm telling you guys that if you are somebody that missed the 2020 dip, people were paying off their mortgages one year, two years after investing and buying the dip in stocks based on what happened in 2020 with COVID. I'm part of those people. Like, I made so much money in my entire life. I've never made so much money in my entire life than 
in 2021, but I made decisions, I made actions, I took positions in 2020, I stepped back and I remained patient. And when it was time for me to cash out, I took a portion of my money from my stocks in order to pay off my house. But I still have a six, six uh, a figure investment portfolio in order to ride out you know, this next bull market that is coming. You know, it doesn't matter my long-term investments, it doesn't matter if my short-term investment, it doesn't matter if it's in cryptocurrencies. The bottom line is for me that this creates an opportunity for people that are willing to build wealth and to be financially free. If you want your future self to thank you for what you will do now, you need to pay attention to these folks. Because right, is, I mean, now is not the time to be doing unnecessary stuff with your money. Because the way I see things, I would rather not get a new shoe, not get a new suit, not get a new car and invest that money right now because that will create assets. That will bring you know, value. That will bring passive income in form of maybe a dividend. That will triple, double, you know, quadruple, maybe 5x the money I'm using now or rather use to buy stuff that are just going to produce nothing. So that's just my mentality, you know, and I've, I really thrive to get to this point because the moment I shifted to this mindset, I started to see exactly why pe rich people tend to be, um, maybe you will say what, cheap, just because, hey, look at how much money I can make, you know, if I just put this money into investing in something that will continue to, you know, grow and grow and grow and grow. So let me know, folks. Let me know. If you want to know exactly which stocks, which sector you need to buy, please let me in the comment section. In, I mean, <laughs> let me know in the comment section. Or you can just click on my services below and we will get a consultation just for you to make sure we get you started. But please, folks, I'm begging you, do not miss on this huge opportunity, especially as the Fed is making a shift, a big move that will change the entire, you know, short term for the market reaction.